this is the first of three videos that we're going to go through the different things inside of the solar system. This one we're going to look at uh, the first four planets. All right. Now you can see that I've got eight planets up here. And if we go through them, we've got Mercury, we've got Venus, we've got Earth, Mars, and then i got this other group down here. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, watch pronunciation, and Neptune. Now, I've got them divided up into these two groups because there are two kinds of planets. There are terrestrial planets, which are the top four, the innermost planets. And then there are the Jovian planets, otherwise known as gas giant planets. Now, you can put planets into these two groups based on their properties. If we take a look at the terrestrial planets up here, what you would notice is first they're small. All right. These pictures aren't to scale, but they are much smaller than uh, the gas giants. They are rocky, so their composition is fundamentally different. They are close to the sun, and they are all very close to each other, as you guys will see in the size and scale lab. Those are the properties of the terrestrial planets. The gas giant or the Jovian planets, on the other hand, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, they are large low density or gaseous, all right, farther out from the sun and farther apart from each other. Those are the different properties that you can use to group these up. Now, obviously I didn't say Pluto, and some will argue that Pluto is a planet or is it not a planet. Uh, you'll find that out later. But there are three criteria that any object needs to meet, and here they are. If you want to be a planet, first off, you need to go around the sun. They all do. Two, they have to have a sufficient mass to assume hydrostatic equilibrium. In other words, there is enough gravity to actually cause the rock as it's, uh, was, or the gas to form into a planet, to form into a round shape, or nearly round. Okay, technically we're not a perfectly round sphere. We're close. And thirdly, it has to clear its neighborhood around its orbit. In other words, it can't share its orbit with a bunch of other debris or large objects. It's the only planet or object in that uh, orbit. Those are the three criteria. So we're gonna look at just the terrestrial planets here, those first four. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of ramble off some stuff that you wanna definitely put down uh, about each planet. So first off, this is Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the sun and according to Kepler's second law, or excuse me, according to uh, So first off, let's go with Mercury. Mercury is the first planet from the sun. And that means, according to Kepler's laws, it has the shortest orbital period. It does it in 88 Earth days. And it is locked in a tidal resonance. For every three uh, times it rotates, it orbits twice around the, uh, the sun. Uh, and just like our Earth is in a synchronous, or excuse me, our moon is in synchronous orbit around us, uh, that is caused by the tidal effects of the Earth on the Moon. Same kind of thing with the orbital uh, rotation of Mercury. All right. As far as atmosphere, it really doesn't have any atmosphere. All right. It is so close to the Sun, it is being blasted by uh, the solar uh, winds. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. We will get to that later. Um, that any atmosphere that uh, would be there just gets knocked off. Uh, as far as composition, this is kind of interesting. Uh, it is very, very dense, and in fact, if you were to open it up, what we'd imagine we would see with Mercury is that it's very similar to the Earth's composition if you were to remove the crust and the mantle. So if you were to leave only Earth's outer core and inner core and then throw on a thin crust, all right, that's what we would think Mercury is interior is like, which is kind of an interesting thought because some scientists have hypothesized that maybe during the early parts of the solar system formation, that maybe things did run into each other. And that maybe large planet decimals smashed into one another, just like the moon and the Earth. But instead of part of it to, uh, causing to recoalesce into a moon, it's so close to the sun that those bits and pieces just flew it into the sun. Um, as far as magnetic field, it does have a magnetic field, and here's why this is important. Magnetic field, in order to have a magnetic field like the Earth does, two things need to be going on. First off, the interior of the planet, or moon, needs to be molten. 
And secondly, that molten core needs to be spinning. And if you can detect a magnetic field, those two things are going on. So we know that the interior of Mercury is not solid. All right, it's still molten and that it is spinning. Um, <clears throat> now, it kind of looks like the moon. It is has been impacted a lot. But uh, the most interesting feature uh, on Mercury are these things known as scarps. Scarps are really steep cliffs. All right, and some of these seem to go all the way around uh, Mercury. And the way that scientists have explained these scarps is that as Mercury has cooled, all right, it actually has shrank. And when its sh interior shrank, the crust, which was rigid at the time, couldn't hold its own weight. So it actually uh, broke into these scarps. So the scarps were actually uh, formed by a planet shrinking, which is very, very cool to think about. Um, as far as the moons or rings, it doesn't have either one. All right, Venus. Some really cool things about Venus to talk about. Uh, first off, where most planets are orbiting in a counterclockwise ro uh, revolution around the sun and also rotating on their axis counterclockwise, Venus has a clockwise rotation. It is actually in retrograde rotation. In other words, it's spinning backwards. This is a very odd thing. All right. And the way that some scientists have come to explain this is that maybe it did have a moon at one time. But maybe that moon was in a stable orbit uh, and that it actually hit the uh, Venus in such a way that it stopped Venus's rotation actually caused it to spin backwards. It spins backwards very, very slowly. Um, it does not have any rings. We don't, it doesn't have a moon. Maybe it did based on its rotation. Uh, but it's also used to be thought as Earth's twin. It's about the same size. It's about the same distance uh, from the sun, so they're very close in size, and we thought they would be very similar in composition, but they're not. Uh, its atmosphere is extremely different. First off, if you're standing outside, you have one atmosphere of pressure on you here on Earth. That's about 14 pounds per square inch. On Venus, you would have 92 uh, atmospheres of pressure on you. That is over 1,000 pounds, I believe, of pressure. <clears throat> if that wasn't bad enough, Venus, all right, even though it's further away from the sun than Mercury, it is actually the hottest planet. And this is due to the fact that it has a runaway greenhouse effect. Its atmosphere is composed uh, of over 90% of carbon dioxide. And if you think uh, about carbon dioxide here, it comes out of our, the tailpipes of our cars and is causing uh, an increase in Earth's temperature called global warming. Well, that's only 1% or less of our atmosphere. What if the Earth's atmosphere was uh, 92 times thicker and it was 95% uh, carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide would trap all of Earth's heat and cause it to very, be very, very hot. It's over 420 degrees Fahrenheit. It's hot enough to melt lead. Um, again, the extreme pressure, and if that's not bad enough, when it rains, uh, it rains sulfuric acid. Very, very nasty place to be. Um, as far as the magnetic field, kind of goes back into its composition uh, or its slow rotation. We know it probably has a molten interior, but it's spinning so slowly that there is no magnetic field. Earth, really not anything else we need to talk about Earth. We did uh, an entire semester on geology. Uh, one thing that I will add, though, all right, obviously Earth is unique in the fact that it has life. And in order to have life, there is one thing that we must have, and that is liquid water. Nothing on Earth can live without liquid water. And if we're going to look for planets outside of our solar system that uh, can have liquid water, all right, and therefore potentially uh, support life, you would have to find a planet what is known as in the, uh, in the Goldilocks zone around its star. Goldilocks zone. If you think back to the, uh, the story, Goldilocks story, that uh, when they went to, she went to the porch, uh, Mama Bears was too uh, hot, 
Papa Bear's was too cold, and Little uh, Bear's was just right. Same idea here. If Earth was a little bit closer to our sun, it would get too hot, and all the water would boil away. If the Earth was a little bit too far out, say where Mars is, all right, we'd be too cold, and all the liquid water would freeze up. We need to be not too hot, not too cold, but the right distance from the sun in order to have liquid water. And Earth is in that Goldilocks zone. Last terrestrial planet, Mars. All right, Mars uh, has an atmosphere that's also uh, primarily composed out of carbon dioxide, just like Venus. However, Venus, on the other hand, which is extremely hot, Mars is extremely cold. Uh, it is farther away, but it's also uh, much, much thinner of an atmosphere. All right. Um, in fact, uh, one cool thing that can happen on Mars is when, uh, since it has such a thin atmosphere, when the winds kick up, uh, it'll kick up with this rusty red uh, sand and cause planet-wide dust storms. Very, very cool looking. Uh, but if you want to go to Mars, very, very bad for uh, anyone staying on there. These would be hurricane winds that last for weeks, or maybe months on end. Uh, let's see, magnetic field. Uh, it does not have a magnetic field. All right, and this c becomes uh, a problem later on. But uh, the reason why we think it doesn't have a magnetic field is because it's much smaller than the Earth. It's about a sixth our size. And, um, and therefore, it was a lot smaller, and it cooled off a lot faster than the Earth is cooling off. And uh, the interior just turned solid. All right. Um, but it wasn't always. Uh, in fact, we know that there was uh, uh, magma in, uh, in its crust at one time because it does have uh, the largest volcano, extinct we think, uh, in the entire solar system called Olympus Mons. And Olympus Mons is the biggest, uh, uh, again, is the biggest volcano. It is a shield volcano. And uh, what else here? Let's see. Moons, it does have two, Phobos and Demos, which we think are just captured asteroids, no rings. But the big question that we have for Mars, does it have water? Or at least did it in the past? And we know there is water on Mars now. But it's not in the way you may think. Uh, see these ice caps up here? These polar caps? Most of that is dry ice. Carbon dioxide that has frozen into a solid. All right, not actual water. But underneath those, we do think there is uh, water that, uh, that has frozen. There may be some under the ground, also in the permafrost, uh, under the dust. But there is evidence that suggests that there was water on Mars at one time, at least. Uh, for example, things like this. Uh, these drainage areas look like a lot of things that we see here on Earth. Gullies, um, look like old riverbeds, possibly. So these drainage basins indicate that there might have been might have been in the past. Uh, more importantly though, when we sent our space probes there, we actually see that there are minerals in the rock record on Mars that, here on Earth at least, can only form in water. So that's very strong evidence that at least at one time it did have water in a thicker atmosphere. The question is what happened? One idea is that since it has a smaller uh, size and cooled off much faster and lost its magnetic field, our magnetic field here on Earth helps protect us from the, uh, the solar winds from the sun. It diverts them to the poles and causes the auroras. But without that, uh, what could happen is our atmosphere would get knocked off. And as water evaporated away, uh, it gets knocked off by the solar winds and then disappears. All right, those are the four terrestrial planets. Next one's over the Jovian.